Today we're talking about the binomial theorem. The goal is to use the binomial theorem to expand binomials raised to whole numbered exponents. But before we do that, we're going to talk about something that doesn't seem to relate. It's Pascal's triangle. Anybody remember pa Pascal's triangle? You start with the, now it's not a, it's not a geometric triangle. It's, it's triangular. It's a triangular organization or set of numbers. We start on the outside of the triangle with some ones, like on the outside, in that sort of shape. And then to get the numbers on the inside, you remember what you do? You add the kind of number, numbers diagonally above to get the number down here. So one plus one is two, so that, that should be a two right there. And, and that, is, that is really a, re, a recursive sequence line of thought right there, isn't it? So you, Pascal's triangle is generated recursively. Okay, so the, the, the next row, you're gonna start out with a one, expand, make the one a little wider than that one. And then you're gonna add, to get the next number, you're gonna add the one and the two above it and put it right in between the one and the two, but below it, right, like so. And then go past the two horizontally and then add the two and the one and get a, another three and then put a one on the end and you've got that row of the triangle. And then what, what would the next row be number wise? One, four, six, four, one. One, four, six, four, one. And let's do one more just for fun. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Does everybody see how the triangle is generated? Okay, this first top row, which only contains the 1, is called row 0. So we start counting at 0 here. So we'll use n for that. n equals 0. This is row n equals 0. This is row n equals 1, the one with the 1 and the 1. Row n equals two is the one with the one, two, one, and then so on and so forth. So the way to remember it is the one with the threes in the middle, that's row three. The one with the four right after the initial one is row four, but it's really the fifth row, right? And then the one with the five right after the one is row five, but it's really the sixth row. So that's kind of weird, you gotta get used to that. Okay, Pascal's triangle. Okay, it turns out that the numbers in Pascal, Pascal's triangle form the coefficients of a binomial when you multiply it out according to an exponent of n. So check it out. If, here's, here's, one, uh, here's a formula you may have memorized. If you take a plus b and square it out, so n is, n is two in this case, what's the formula for that? a squared plus 2 ab plus b squared and look at the coefficients 1 2 1 which exactly match the numbers in what we call row 2 of Pascal's triangle and that's not a coincidence if I took and I'm not going to take the time to do it here but if I took a plus b cubed the coefficients that you'd get when you multiply that out would be exactly one of whatever the, you know, whatever the a times the, whatever the power of a times whatever the power of b is, the coefficients would be uh, one, three, three, one. And if I took a plus b to the fourth power and multiplied it out, the coefficients would be one, four, six, four, one. If n is relatively low, then Pascal's triangle is a very quick way to multiply something out. Uh, a, well, not just something, a binomial brought to a whole number power. So would you agree that a plus b cubed would be a plus b quantity, well, just a plus b times a plus b quantity squared? But we already know what a plus b quantity squared is. So the, uh, a plus b cubed would be the quantity a plus b times a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So we just need to multiply this out, combine like terms, and we'll have a plus b cubed. So just remember what you do when you multiply out by uh, uh, polynomials, actually. Distribute this A right here to every term. It's really just distribution, right? So all the powers of A go up by one. So A squared would go to A cubed. Two AB would go to two A squared B. And B squared 
would get a factor of A, A, B squared. And then distribute B so that in each term, each factor of B goes up, the exponent goes up by one, what do you get? So B times A squared is the same as what? Uh, it's the same as A squared B, right? So I'm gonna line it up with its like term, 1A one A, one A squared B right there. So distribute A to uh, B rather to A squared, I get A squared B if I turn the multiplication around. Distribute B to 2AB, what do you get? plus 2AB squared, distribute B to B squared, and you get B cubed. Add up the like terms, I'm adding vertically here. You know, with A cubed plus 3A squared B plus 3AB squared plus B cubed. And look at the coefficients, you guys. There's one, three, three, and one, which exactly match Pascal's triangle in row number three, the n here corresponding with the exponent here. Okay? Doesn't prove that it works for Pascal's triangle, but it makes you believe it a little more. Um, we have a name for one. Uh, since we're starting with the third row of Pascal's triangle, we have a notation And uh, it looks weird, it looks like that. Couple of parentheses, on top we have a three, which is n. On the bottom we have the zero, which is the number th that the, we start counting at in the row. So what I'm saying here is this one right, this one right here is three, zero. And we actually say three choose zero, okay? And then this, this three right here uh, is three, uh, the three comes from the n, choose one, and this three right here, is, we call it three choose two, and this one right here, we call it three choose three. Uh, I know that looks weird if, if, if it's the first time you've seen it, but, but you'll get used to it real quick. So this three right here is, the, is what I just called three one, three choose one, this three is the three choose two, from row three of Pascal's triangle, which is really the fourth row. I know, it's weird. And then uh, this one right here is three, choose three. So we say three, choose two. The terminology comes from probability theory um, or counting theory, depending on which way you look at it. But that's, we're not gonna go there yet, but that's, that's what it's called. So this notation, n choose k, so n on top, k below it, parentheses around it. We say n choose k when you see that. And it stands for, it's just notation, it stands for the binomial coefficient of a plus b to the n from the term in the expansion whose variable part is a to the n minus k times b to the k. You'll see this a little better when we write out the, what, what's called the binomial theorem. But just keep that in mind for now. I'm gonna come back to, that, I, to, to where this comes from in a minute. So without using a calculator or a formula that you might have learned in another class, compute four choose two. Well, I mean, we already did it, but let's do it again. Uh, what's the worst that we have to do? Five total rows of Pascal's triangle, right? To get four, choose two, we also go in according to that two in that row number four. However, we start counting at zero again. So four, choose two, this guy right, just to make it hopefully perfectly clear, this guy right here, so in other words, n is four here in this row. This row, this, this value here is denoted as four, choose zero. This one right here is denoted as four choose zero. So that this four right here is denoted as four choose one. And this, this six right here then would be what? Four choose two. So it's equal to six. 
Is that clear how you use Pascal's triangle to compute it? You just have to remember to start counting at zero to get down to the right row and then in the right amount. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, you can also do it on the calculator. I'll show you that in a little while. You, there's also a formula for it, which we won't get to. You're either going to use Pascal's triangle or your calculator to get uh, four choose two or, or any other binomial coefficient. Uh, let's use Pascal's triangle to get three choose three. So which row am I going to focus on now? Row three. Row three, which is the fourth row down. It's the one with the, th the first three going left to right after the one. It's the one with the three, right? That's how you can remember it. So you start counting at zero. So this is, this guy's uh, three choose zero, three choose one, three choose two, three choose three is one. 